The Golden Trail World Series brings together six of the world's best trail races. In my mind, I was going for the win, not for the second place. I typically think I really like racing at altitude, but that was just a whole nother level. Fuck altitude. Never again? Never again. I don't want to lose the race now. It was a lot of back and forth, which makes a race a race. The big question this year is who's going to win that battle? We will be the Europeans because we believe in us. Eh? I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for other people. Obviously, I underestimated Remy Burnett. In the end, I know there's risk doing drill races, but it's worth the risk. Then, you can lose it all. As humans, on a most basic level, we get hungry, we sleep, we yarn for love, and we run. Right before you head out running, it can be hard to remember exactly why you're doing it. Deep down inside each of us, the reminiscence of who we've been and who we want to be is calling out for action. We've been rooted to nature and the animal kingdom since the early days of our existence. Just like hunters and gatherers did in the past, the survival instinct emerges every time we step outside in the wild. Some run to fulfill their goals, some others simply because they have to. Running is a brutal and emotional sport. My name is Geoffrey. I come from Kenya, running for Team Run Together. Yes, my life I, I have changed completely. I was a farmer. I was farming maize, beans, and other things before I, I shifted to, to running. The story of the Kenyan child running to school with the school bag for 5K and, and going back every day, and this is the, the basic build-up for a runner. I think it's true in, in some cases. I was running also to school, only when I was late. <laughs> if you look at the, the recent times on the on the talents, where they are coming from, it's always changing from those areas who are more cultivated or more developed to more rural areas outside, far away from, from cars, far away from the cities. And when Geoffrey was young, for example, he, he was living close to here, down there, in his home. And when he was going up there, it, is, it was always 500 meter climbing every day. Every day in the morning, from 2,200 meter up to 2,700 meter. And he was doing this not as a training, he was doing this, it was natural. <laughs> Yeah, the life is hard because when you are not employed, when you don't have the job, usually most of the people, the, like here in our place, we rely on farming. When you come from such an area, this is a semi-arid area, the cost of living is really high. So when you have at least something to 
to eat, even to buy something for yourself is really a big hassle. So when you have a, something like a cow or a sheep, we call it an achievement in Kenya. The Kenyan runners, it doesn't matter if they are on the trails or on the road, they run to survive and they run to finance their life and to feed their families. This is their motivation. Since 2006 is when I, there was a small competition in my village and I decided to take part in this competition because I, then I see, ah, I can learn. And then I just did the, this competition. I learned with barefooted and I was performing excellent in this competition. And one Fred who was position one in this competition saw me and then he was interested in helping me. As a Kenyan athlete, it's not enough just to be fast. You also need a sponsor to pay for your flights to Europe, where the prize money and the big competitions are. Joffrey was given that chance and ran a 2.08 in the Dublin Marathon. That's rapid. I will be more excited than you. So that I can't do it. When I took part in my first competition in mountain land, it was in Grossrockner, it was in Austria. This was 2009. And during this time, when I was coming to this competition, there were champions. I remember there was the Jonathan Wyatt, he was the leaning world champion. And when I took part in this competition, I was able to beat him. And I won and I was making the course record of the, that race. So from that day, I thought maybe also mountain learning is a good idea for me. And since then, I like mountain very much. For me, it seems to be so natural. It's, the, it's their natural movement. But if you compare to, to a European with a Kenyan, the Kenyan, most of the time, he looks more relaxed and more easy and more smooth running style. And it's beautiful to see, to see them running. I'm 38 years. My main target was to learn under 210 in full marathon. This was the main target. And I achieved this one. But as long as I'm able to go to competition and perform well, then I'm not retiring soon. First race of the season, and it's the Gamma, a whole marathon when you're still fresh, having not raced all winter. It's a hard one to start with, and if you're not used to European weather, it can be brutal. Yes, there were a lot of people in Segama. Maybe they have never seen the, 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 the Africans. Everybody wanted to take photo with us. And yeah, it was amazing how they did. In Segama, you have three days of preparation. This is three days of preparing. The mind, and because you have to go to the finishing, you have the presentation, there are some ceremony. So, you, in Tsegama, it was like the preparation was even three days before the, 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 the real day of the competition. But in Kenya, in our competition, you just think of it uh, two hours before. And then, poof, you start and go. That's all. <laughs> Yes, I saw the photo of four. I have never met him before. But the, the, I don't know whether they have taken part in any series. I saw some days before on, on social media that there are some Kenyan athletes at the starting line. And I saw them that they have stayed in Segam already two or three weeks, I think, before the competition. So I, for me personally, I knew that they might be well prepared because if you stay in a place, if you check all the parts of the course, so you know what you can expect from the competition. But of course, I, I didn't know how fast and how strong they are in such a long race. My name is Robert Kimbon from Kenya I-10, and I run with Skyrunners Kenya. Yes, I come with my friends 
four of them. You got four of them, and the two from run together. Cuando escribo a los atletas del equipo, yo pensaba que no había no había ningún equipo más de, de atletas de Kenia. Y bueno, luego ya Biel sí que me dice, ¿has visto el listado de inscritos? Que ya empiezan a haber más atletas de Kenia también. Y bueno, hay otro equipo eh, de, de ITEN que van, a, que van a participar. Y bueno, es la primera noticia que tengo. Pero yo tenía mucha confianza con, uh, con nuestros atletas. Eh, aparte que intentamos hacer un trabajo específico de cara a Cegama. Estuvimos casi tres semanas allí entrenando sobre el circuito eh, y estuve yo muy, muy, muy pendiente de la preparación para que saliera lo mejor posible y, uh, y tenía mucha confianza de que nuestros atletas en Cegama fueran por lo menos los, los primeros africanos. I was not surprised because already I had some, some idea there will be other Kenyans who are starting in this competition. Yes. This was the first time I, I saw them. The morning before the race, this is the, the biggest challenge which I encountered during any competition. I feel the body reacting differently as if it's not my own body. Everything is behaving abnormally. It's like I was in fear because of too much athletes, too, and some are strong, some I, I, I have known. So I, I knew it was not going to be an easy task. Race cap, important. Yeah, it's going to be sunny today. Hi, my name is Nienke Brinkman. I am from the Netherlands and I run for Nike Trail. My first race of the season is going to be Segama. Moi, c'est Maud Matisse, j'habite en Suisse et puis je suis à tête Salomon. Cette année, c'est la première fois que je participais à Segama et euh, c'était juste euh, incroyable l'ambiance qu'il y avait là-bas. Not only is the Gamma the first race in the season, but it's been cancelled for the past two years. So it brings together the best athletes in the world, and this year there are so many runners who've never done it before. Maud's been the best trail runner in the world for some time, but last season Ninkit emerged completely new to the sport, with huge talent. It wasn't quite enough, but she pushed her almost to the finish line. The big question this year is who's going to win that battle, because Ninka's looking faster, and she's going to improve on her trail technique as well. Yeah, last year in the, in the finals, Maud beat me uh, with a really big gap. And uh, yeah, it's also a little bit like unfinished business. So going into this race, I it's uh, quite scary to race her again because I have the feeling I cannot beat her. Depuis que j'ai commencé les Golden Trail World Series, je trouve qu'il y a, bah, bien sûr, que le niveau a augmenté et de plus en plus de, de femmes aussi au départ. Après les courses, ça, ça c'est toujours un peu les mêmes. Euh, mais je dirais que vraiment euh, c'est le, le niveau qui a augmenté. The Golden Trail World Series brings together six of the world's best trail races, including races such as Sierras and Al, Pikes Peak, and Zagama. At the end of those six, your best three results count towards the overall score, with the top 30 athletes being invited to a five-day stage race. Five days back to back. That's brutal, but it's for the biggest prize in world trail. Venga, va. Sí. Arranca, no corras, ¿eh? No, no, no. Esto lo digo en plan broma, ¿eh? No es... Yo siempre digo que corres de cobardes. <risa> no, he sido toda la vida montañero. ¿eh? Eh, tampoco alpinista, tampoco montañero. A mí me gusta caminar en la montaña tranquilamente con mi cámara de fotos, 
vivir la naturaleza desde la botánica, desde la fauna, desde el paisaje, y eso es lo que a mí me gusta. A mí ir tan deprisa por ahí me parece que es perderse mucho, muchos detalles de la montaña. Me llamo Alberto Ayerbe Larrea y eh, dentro de la organización de la Cegama y de Gorri soy el director técnico de la prueba. Cuando surgimos, éramos una carrera popular. Eh, en su primera edición prácticamente solamente corrieron atletas de aquí del País Vasco y a día de hoy pues, bueno, corren una barbaridad de, de participantes, de 500 participantes, pues, pues prácticamente casi, casi, no voy a decir la mitad, pero, pero más de un tercio son extranjeros. 500 es el número de participantes los que pueden correr. La solicitud es pues, de 11.000, 12.000. Es una puta locura. Pero es que no hay otra solución. Fíjate, si con 500 participantes el pueblo está petado, o sea, la gama no tiene infraestructuras para eso. <risa> Sería un auténtico fracaso. Oh, there we go. I was sending you. The two Kenyans are following him. This is the kind of ground they are used to running on. The road and then the next climb, that's definitely going to be where we'll see them. And then the rest of the field is following. And Sara is really going on. Tenemos a toda la élite mundial eh, corriendo aquí. Y además tenemos como novedad, como comentaba antes, a los keniatas. Que es toda una incógnita, al menos para mí, saber cómo, cómo les sale la prueba. Parece que ellos, como todos sabemos lo que son los atletas keniatas, son muy buenos, pero bueno, tampoco sé cómo se desenvuelven en un terreno como la de la Cegama y Corri. A lot of Kenyan athletes in the past have brought their huge speed into races like Zagama, but actually started too fast because of it and been unable to keep that pace all the way through the end. They're known for being quick, but not for lasting the distance. The big question is whether this year that can change. So we, we now have the top three uh, female runner, Nien K. Pinkman, in the lead, Maud Matisse in second place. Una carrera por montaña es un subir y bajar constantemente. Y, y digo esto porque no tiene absolutamente nada que ver una maratón de asfalto, por ejemplo, con una que son como dos modalidades deportivas completamente diferentes. En la montaña tú no puedes llevar un ritmo continuo por kilómetro. Eso para nada. ¿Por qué? Porque en la montaña puedes tener zonas más o menos corribles, otras que son enormemente técnicas y prácticamente tienes que andar trepando o destrepando. Entonces, eh, técnicamente tienes que estar muy preparado. Es un deporte que requiere ser montaña y, sobre todo, se basa muchísimo en la meteorología. No es lo mismo correr en un terreno seco que embarrado. No es lo mismo correr a 30, 30 y pico grados de temperatura o a 8, 10, 12, 15 grados. Ahí eh, la variación es enorme. ¿eh? Por eso, cualquier corredor eh, que haya corrido, aunque sea varias veces la ciudad de Corri, prácticamente nunca hacen los mismos tiempos. The start for Chorfi is always uh, somehow a challenge and, and it was like that also in Zegama. He was a little bit nervous and he tries sometimes to hide behind uh, the other guys in the beginning. But this is something uh, which makes it difficult, especially in the first few kilometers. If you are too far behind, you have to start overtaking many people. You, you spend some energy uh, by doing that. In the first 10 kilometers, I think he was able to catch up. Uh, close to the leading group and then he could find his rhythm and he was running well uphill in the first part of the race. We've got our top two Kenyans here catching up. Yeah, running as a pack, in it probably helps fifth them and sixth. to run together, to really talk and to help each other with right, ranking. This is one like thing we know they're good at is running together in packs. As expected, most of the Kenyan runners went out too fast and started to wilt in the sun, but not Joffrey. He's more experienced and actually took his time up the mountain. Hopefully that will play into his favor 
and in the second half of the race, will start picking off positions. Uh, in the switchback is Nimke Brinkman, currently leading the 2022 edition of Zegama Ice Cori. We assume it's Sarah Alonso coming just behind Maud. It's going to be interesting to see if she can put some time on Maud or not. Alors après euh, la, la première grosse montée, euh, je ne voyais pas Ninke. J'espérais pouvoir la rattraper dans la descente, euh, mais j'ai vite vu que voilà, je n'ai pas réussi à la rattraper et, et je pensais aussi qu'elle avait fait euh, des progrès en descente. During the race, one section the athletes fear is passing through Santiago's Camino. It's not only rocky, but because it's such a popular hike, the stones have been polished into super slippery ankle breakers. <laughs> I make a line. Will you remember? Yeah, I think that's all right, but this is uh, difficult, I think. Especially when it's slippery, the rocks are really... I think then the rocks are really slippery. Um, the days before the race, I saw a part of the track. The cave was... a. Uh, was a fear, I think, because it's very technical for me. And uh, I, I really <laughs> made a nice path that I thought, uh, I, I want to take this path when I arrive. And I, I did this also during the race. It gave me some confidence that I knew how to run this part. Good job. What comes after the cave? Oh, Santo Espíritu. Santo Espíritu es más o menos mitad de carrera. ¿eh? La mitad de carrera, para ser exacto, está entre Santo Espíritu y Aitubor. ¿eh? Kilómetro 21. Sería la mitad de los 42. Simbólicamente, oh, ¿qué es Santo Espíritu? Pues si un aficionado al ciclismo, por ejemplo, le diría el Tourmalet en el Tour de Francia. O sea, un pasillo humano. ¿Eh? animando a los participantes como si les fuese la vida en ella. Ahí se crea un ambiente entre el corredor y el público que, vamos, parece que se animan mutuamente. O sea, no hay más que ver. Cualquier foto que veáis subiendo a un cuerpo corredor, si, te, si nos fijamos en la expresión del público, es que lo está viviendo. Es fantástico, es increíble. Y eso lo percibe el corredor. Uh, it was amazing because I met a lot of people and I could never thought that I can meet such people in the high mountain. There were thousands of them and then they were pushing, shouting, some touching the legs and it was a nice feeling. And during this time, my ears were only feeling the noise. And it was nice. It was the best moment for me during this competition. And that was the third female, Sara Alonso. A minute and a half behind. So now, like 2.31, so that's about four minutes now. And actually, also Sara still under at the moment, probably with some minutes extra. Faster than Maite Mayoria's time. time. Passing through Santa Spiritu, the top three women were all under course record pace. And in third place was Sara Alonso. She's Basque and she's a local runner. If she can hold on and they break the record, this is going to be a huge day for the history books. C'est incroyable parce que deux, deux, voire trois kilomètres avant la foule, bah, tu entends déjà au fait comme un, un brouhaha comme ça qui, qui ouais, euh, et que tu te rapproches de plus en plus. Donc c'est ouais ça, 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 ça nous prend et on a on a envie d'arriver tout de suite euh, dans cette foule. So after the, the, the second part, I also knew it's going to be a technical part. Um, if now people overtake me, 
uh, I, I could lose a lot because the technical part I will probably lose also more relatively to the others. We thought Joffrey was going to be the first Kenyan runner to get to the top of the second peak, but he actually started to fade. Not only that, imagine being him and then finding out there's another Kenyan team, Skyrunners Kenya, and a new runner, Robert Kemboy, who'd started fast and was continuing to be fast throughout the race. La verdad es que fue muy muy emocionante ver en creo que la carrera más mítica del mundo del trail running a Robert Kemoy como primer atleta africano de alto nivel que fue algo muy muy bonito no On the downhill, I got wrong information and I thought, what? <laughs> I don't want to lose the race now. Sara Alonso was catching, and she was catching fast. Roy Reader came into this series of high expectations. Training was well prepared, so I didn't have any concerns about the Mont Blanc. Después de que gama, me planteo ir a Mont Blanc a ganar. You're leading, you start to think about the win, and then you can lose it all.